And then the following week was now that he's telling you what you ought to be doing in this season, what are you doing about it? What are you going to do? Okay. So, men, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing up the challenge to the men in our church that we need to start um, being the pillars of our church. This has, that's what we're called to be. Okay. So, this past uh, men's, I, I brought up this um, plan for our men's to start up a ministry that is, and Dave gave a title to it, it's called Men of Acts. So I told him, let's hyphenate that and call it Men of Action. Okay, so what we're going to start doing is I'm going to start making a list and I'll put it back on that prayer table for anybody in our church has needs. You need, it could be anything. You guys need a, 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 a ride to the grocery store. You know, you need, you need some, some uh, yard work done or, you know, some light carpentry or stuff like that being done and you need help. Put your name on that list. Write down what you need, and then the men will come and will fill those needs. Okay? I'm coming alongside um, Auntie Sharon because she wants to do a, a ministry for our church too, start a ministry which helps out the people in our church also. People who are in need of whether it be uh, food or toiletries or whatever it is. You know, if we're in need, of course our church has a great big heart because we reach out to different countries but we also have to take care of our own okay so I'm coming alongside Auntie Sharon's vision too and we're, we're gonna build together starting from starting from here okay so men next week next week Tuesday when we have our men's what we're gonna do is we're gonna go out into Blaisdell Park and we're gonna bring toiletries and we're gonna bring whatever um, food we can bring to bless those homeless people in the park. And we're going to pray over them. Because we need to be men of acts. Because we're coming from a church of acts. Amen? All right. Um, hospitality ministry. Your snack donations will be appreciated. Homemade or store-bought. Cookies or other goodies are welcome. Um, healthy stuff is good too. You, know, you guys want to bring healthy stuff. It's welcome. Because we got a lot of health freaks in here um, also needed is uh, donations to purchase coffee and other drinks uh, next plot blessing is going to be the 30th of this month uh, please please bring something to share and stay a while for some vala our ministry yeah? okay um, baptism we're gonna have baptism on the 16th okay it's going to be at our recreation pool uh, down by our house if you guys need information, you guys haven't been baptized, you guys want to get baptized, maybe you want to re-baptize yourself, maybe you're not sure if the first time worked, because I've done that. I'm like, I'm, I'm not sure. Let's, let's do it again. So if you guys want to, and if you just guys want to be a part of, of being, being there to pray over these people as they're being baptized too, you guys come down. It's going to be um, on the 16th at one, one, 1 o'clock down at our pool. Like I said, if you guys need information, you can either contact me or, or talk to my lovely wife over here. And um, we're going to have a small pot blessing also during that day for afterwards so we can fellowship and talk about how you feel. You know, we might have to revive some people slain in the spirit. So bring some fans or something. Okay. So mark your calendars and remember March 16th, all right? Um, let's see, a reminder, our service starts at 9 o'clock. I don't have to tell you guys that because you're here. Remind everybody else that you see that didn't come early that it starts at 9. Like Pastor Nando said, it's going to take some getting used to, but not for me because I'm, I'm here anyway at about 6.30. So I'm all good. Not to rub that into anybody. But don't forget to um, sign out your prayer requests and praise reports and put it in the, in the bowl back there because it's really important that you get prayed up. And it's really important that Pastor Nando gets praise, praise reports too because he loves those. Okay? So with no further ado, the man of the hour, Pastor Nando. Aloha. 
I love to get an early start. I'm an early riser. I woke up at about 2 o'clock this morning and just praying. And, and uh, it is really important that I had a fresh manna from the Lord. Amen? Not regurgitated food or somebody else's devotions or anything like that. So for those of this is why spending time with the Jesus Christ is so imperative, so important, so that he has a rhema word for you. What a rhema word is, a specific word for a specific person for a specific reason. So when you start to read it, you go, wow, that's for me. Then you just, you know, it's something really important. And uh, just a celebration, uh, the ladies had um, a great celebration for Sister Stephanie and, and new baby girl coming. And uh, yeah, they had a great time, yeah? There's, there's one complaint, I wasn't invited. Oh, <laughs> so congratulations, uh, Mom, you are here for just a little while longer, and uh, Stephanie's there last Sunday for a little bit, Is, or are you going to be a little bit, depending on baby, <laughs> and so she's, uh, we continue to pray for you and your family, so Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, just continue to bless Stephanie, Father, and let her know that you're, she is loved by many, she is loved by many, and mostly by you, in Jesus' name, amen. And really important, if you guys need prayer, guys, if you need prayer, don't leave church without being prayed for. Can I hear an amen? amen. If you're not prayed for, that's, that's your kuliana, that's your responsibility. So that's really, 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 everybody say really? really. Important. Okay, that's really important. Redundant, but important. So that's really exciting. God is doing great things in, in, in people's lives, and I thank God for that. Uh, just to share with you that God has put... Uh, a burden on Lily and I's heart to return to the Philippines. So we're, we're fundraising and we're praying and we're, you know, we're being led by the Spirit to, to really expand our ministry in the Philippines as well as thank you, Pastor Thane, for really taking uh, the hold of our ministry here too. Backyard ministry is extremely important. We've got to take care of our own. Amen? So God says, go into all nations and preach the Word of God to reach and to teach. That's really important. All nations, what all nations is Pearl City Nation, Blazedale Park Nation, okay? All the way over to Bali Nation and the Philippine Nation and to Houston. By the way, Brother Ray Gutierrez from our Houston campus sends his regards and he'll be here on the 12th to, uh, to worship with us. He just loves it here. So he sends his aloha and his love and we thank, uh, we thank God for them too and for people in our, in our Virginia Beach um, campus with um, um, Mary and the kids there, they send their love also. And all over the world, okay, we have people in Pangasinan, in Luwag, in Bali, all, you know, and some of them are downloading all of the YouTube. By the way, um, Ryan, thank you for the YouTube download. For those of you who want to share that, uh, Brian puts our, our messages on, on YouTube, and you guys can link on to our YouTube and, and, uh, and share the message. In Jesus' name, amen? Good. This is dedicated for all those of you who are struggling with overcoming contradictions in your life. Can I, anybody live a contradiction? Like you, you know what to do, but you don't do it. And you, things you don't want to do, you do it. And you get all confused. And, and this is where, when I read the scripture, this is where I got the, my term, I know, yeah, yeah but. Overcoming contradictions, okay? Um, you can take a look at this above. It's Romans 7. 15 to 25 in the Living Bible. And you, I know all of us, me included, all of us have, have struggled with this before, now, and will struggle with it tomorrow. And this is just the facts of life. Okay, verse 15, I don't understand myself at all. Keith, can I hear an amen? amen. Okay, right here. <laughs> For I really want to do what is right, but I can't. Keith, amen. Okay, good. We talked about this, that's why over, you know, over our, our breakfast. I do what I don't want to do, what I hate. I know perfectly well that what I'm doing is wrong, and my bad conscience proves that I agree with these laws I am breaking, but I can't help myself because I'm no longer doing it. It is sin inside me that is stronger than I am that makes me do these evil things. Anybody remember Flip Wilson, some of you older people? The devil made me do it. Uh, guess, remember that? Well, that was my, one of my favorite programs. 
Verse 18, I know I'm rotten through and through as far as my old sinful nature is concerned. No matter which way I turn, I can't make myself do right. I want, but I can't. When I want to do good, I don't. And when I try not to do wrong, I do it anyway. Now, if I'm doing what I'm doing, what I don't want to do, it is plain where the trouble is. Sin still has me in its evil grip. Anybody can say amen to that. You look at the things that you want to do. You know you got to do it. You know, God says, you know, to do, okay, not to do what is right is sinful. So we look at things and we just turn away and try to ignore things because somebody else is going to do it, hopefully. Okay? But sometimes it's a test. God taps your shoulder and says, what are you going to do about it? Right? It's just how many of you, okay, um, used to pass rubbish on the road and not see it? And how many of us now, we look at the rubbish on the, you know, on the roadway, you just got to pick it up for some reason, Right? Or some people used to flick things out of the window and all that, not think anything about it now, man. I tell you what, you put it in your car and leave the dirt in your car, okay? So that's really important. Okay, verse 21, it seems to be the f fact of life that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. I love to do God's will so far as my new nature is concerned, but there is something else deep within me in my lower nature that is at war with my mind and wins the fight and makes me a slave to sin that is still within me. In my mind, I want to be, want to be God's willing servant, but instead I find myself still enslaved to sin. That's our human nature. You see how it is. My new life tells me to do right, but my old nature that is still inside me loves to sin. Oh, what a terrible predicament I'm in. Who will free me from this, my slavery to this deadly lower nature? And here is the answer. Thank God. It's been done by Jesus Christ the Lord. He has set me free. Circle that. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. Indeed meaning period. Indeed. So living in contradiction contradictions have you been there are you there right now living in contradictions you know yeah but at times it seems like we're getting nowhere pretty fast and getting really 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 tired on a treadmill of life why because we know we're we're doing wrong galatians 5 17 really expands on this human nature and uh, and our whole and the holy spirit battling galatians 17 says that whichever side you lean on you will follow Okay, the sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are op opposite of what the sinful nature, nature desires. These two forces are constantly, never gives up, constantly fighting each other. So you are not free to carry out your good intentions. God's word and the world on separate ends. The only thing in the balance is called the lie. W-O-R-D, W-O-R-L-D. You've heard that before. Whichever side we lean to, to one degree or another, is our Lord. We follow that. Knowing is good, but knowing is not good enough. Education is just part of your success, so is failure. If you don't want to fail, you sit down and do nothing at all. You'll still fail. Amen? Amen? So, without understanding what you know is just feeding your potential, feeding your good intentions. Good intentions never get you anywhere. The key to success is correctly implementing what you learned, what you understand, what, why, and how. Okay? It's like carpentry. It's like engineering. It's like surfing. It's like golfing it's like raising children whatever it is you got to know what to do according to okay, according to the knowledge but you have to exercise the knowledge by applying what you know if you don't apply it then it's just potential okay knowing and applying God's world will produce the results that God desires and create something called synergy synergy this is the definition combined efforts being greater than its part 
The working together of two or more people, organizations, or things, especially when the results is greater than the sum of the individual effects or capabilities. Uncle Albie, can you come up? We're going to demonstrate that just in a couple, couple seconds here. In a marriage, this is what the Bible says, two become one flesh. It's a miracle. Okay? Any marriage team or organization works best and produces better results or the best results when everyone is doing their part well in harmony with one another. If your marriage is not where it's supposed to be, usually it's you're pulling at, at both ends instead of working together, one flesh. Okay. Take a look at this over here, this demonstration, okay? If you listen to the guitar, can you just strum the guitar, for Uncle Albie? Every string has its place. Every string must be in tune. If it's not in tune, this is what happens. Can you take it out of, out of tune, please? Okay, play something. You can play and play and play, but it doesn't sound correct. Why? It's not in tune and it's out of place. Amen? Beautiful song. It's, this, is how, this is how Keith sings. <laughs> but watch this. But when you put it in tune, this is the results. Sometimes it takes a little bit of adjustment. Just a little bit of adjustment. Now, if you put it in the master's hand, watch what happens. one another in your marriage in your ministries in your church and in tune with God listen to this jam two three four So every string is in place. Each one of you are strings in God's heart. Every one of you has its place. Every one of you has a gifting and a passion. And when God plays the strings of your heart, there's sweet music and harmony. And synergy, synergy is produced, making things much better. So in a church, in a marriage, if you're fighting one another, you're disagreeing, what happens is get in tune with God's word. Start to pray. This is why there, I really start to emphasize okay, the core values of a church, of prayer, of getting into God's word, of serving and giving and having accountable relationships so that you don't get a sour note in your life. That is so supremely important. This is why coming to church and, and doing your devotions is important is because the the further you are from God's voice, the less you will hear him. In the book of Revelation, God says he knocks at your heart, but if you don't answer the door, one day you won't hear him anymore. So is God knocking on your heart. The devil knows only too well that if he can separate you, a house divided against itself will not it says in Mark 3, 24 and 25, if a kingdom is divided against itself, the kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, the house cannot stand. Have you noticed our world is filled with contradictions? You take a look at our government, you take a look at our finances, you take a look at the world powers, it's out of kilter somehow. We have to put it on, okay, in tune with God's word. And that's the only way we can survive these tumultuous times. One of, the, one of the greatest strategies, if you understand 
that the, that the devil uses is to sub separate us from God. He knows that if he can cut off the head of the church, the body just runs around like a chicken without a head. Doing, 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 not getting anywhere fast and bumping into each other and hurting each other with misunderstandings and, and misconceptions and we're looking for something better. Never finding it. Amen? I know we've, we've done that. If you look at a household, this is why I, I tell you what, I applaud single moms and single dads. Some of you are married and you're still single mom and single dad. I applaud you for that because it's not easy. Amen? I tell you what, but God is your father. God is your husband. God is your wife. And God will complete you in the meantime. Okay, in the meantime, you start praying for your husbands or your wives. And by your example and your prayers, God will heal that for you in season if you don't give up. So, he tries to break a relationship with Christ. Why? Because if we separate ourselves from the knowledge and the heart of Christ, we're dead meat. It's just a matter of time that we will perish. Okay? So what is, in, 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 what is important is Satan will look at the weakest point. Just like any strategy, he will look at the weakest point in your life and he will massage that. He will massage that, that, that if, you're, if you're angry, if, you, if you're offended. If, that's Satan's bait, by the way, being offended. Okay? He'll massage that and massage that. And he will make you look inward instead of outward. And once you justify that you're right, it's just a matter of time. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Anyone belongs to Christ becomes a new person. All life has gone. A new life has begun. Can I hear any man? Man, I tell you what, it's brand new. You smell like new leather. Woo! How many of you like smelling? Walking to go, ooh, that smells good. Or oh, a new baby. Oh, there's something about baby's breath. You don't smell coffee, you don't smell anything. Baby's breath is so cool. I love it. Okay? And uh, you know what? It's not a duct tape type of recreation. It's not a bondo type of creation. You are a new person in Christ. All things have passed away. So that's really important. Everyone make, uh, is, div is given different gifts and talents and passions, but we do have the same purpose. Whether it be golf, whether it be surfing, whether it be air conditioning, whether it be ministry, whether it be kids, whether it be whatever it is. Okay? Same thing. If you read your front of your page, it says to reach and teach the unsaved. Reach and teach. To love God and to love people, both sides, and synergy. Matthew 28, 18 to 20, and Matthew 27, 37 to 40. Okay? We can do things better together than separately. That's how God created us, to need one another. So here are a couple, of, a few more, more than, conquers, uh, more than conquers in Christ principles. Number one is to forgive and to, and to forget. Tough to do, but it is necessary to do. God did that for us. He said, I throw your sin, sins into the seal of forgetfulness. I will not remember them anymore. I will not remind you about it anymore. Philippians 3, 13, 14 says, Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it, it my own. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. In other words, you blew it in the past. Learn from it. Get wisdom from it. Squeeze every ounce of wisdom from your failures. And ask God to help you not to do that again. That's called going back to your vomit. Or pay going back to the mud puddle. Okay? Learn from it. Then move on. Amen? Remember this again. I'll say it again. Failure is not final unless you make it to be. Learn from it. And don't do it again. Number two is confidence and action. This is what Pastor, Pastor Thane was talking about. Men of action. Not only know what to do, but do something about it. James 2, 18 says, Now, someone may argue some people have faith, others have good deeds, but I say, how can you show me your faith if you don't have good deeds? I will show you my faith by my good deeds. Okay, let's get things straight first of all. Okay, you are not saved by good works. Now repeat that. You are not saved by good works. Ephesians 2.89 says, For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. 
God's faithfulness. Through faith. <coughs> and this is not from yourselves. It is a gift of God. Say a gift of God. Okay, so you cannot earn your salvation. It's a gift. I will show you my, and he says, not by works, so that anyone can boast. In other words, man, I work harder than you, so you know, I have favor with God. <laughs> that doesn't work, sorry. It's because God loves you that, uh, and it shows you his favor. <clears throat> now, what is really important is we do good deeds as a result of our gratefulness. We're so grateful to God for what he has done for us, what he has promised us in the future that, you know what? My yes, God, is in advance. Thank you, Rama. Whatever you want me to do, God, thank you. I gladly will do it because I am grateful. This is why when God says, let your yeses be yeses and your noes be noes. But for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's really important to me. I am so grateful that I'm not going to hell. I'm so grateful that God has touched each of our children and they're serving the Lord. I'm so grateful to the home that he has, he has provided for us. I'm so grateful we're living in Hawaii. I'm so grateful for the little things. Hot water, milk, yeah, medicine. This is why one of my goals is for each of you to go on missions. It will change your life. Right, Devin? Nuts. Then you will come. I guarantee you, you walk off the plane, you'll kiss the ground in the United States of America. So that's really important. God died for us, saved us in spite of our sins. For me, that's good enough. Jesus loves me. This I know. In Luke 17, 10 to 19, they talk about 10 lepers, right? Yes, and they beg Jesus, come and, come, and, you know, come and really heal us, and he did. But what happened is nine went away and only one came back. It was a Samaritan, an outcast. I only can assume it says here, this man was a Samaritan, it says in verse 16. I only can conclude that the other nine we're not Samaritans, that they were God's people. What happened? Verse 17, Jesus says, didn't, didn't I heal ten? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give me glory except this foreigner, this outcast, this Samaritan? And Jesus said to the man, stand up and go. Your faith has healed you. It's just like the road to Jericho. The priest and the Levite just passed this guy on the road to Jericho. And it took a Samaritan, a non-believer, an outcast, a foreigner to come and says, how, how can I help you? Isn't that cool? So I say, Lord, give me a Samaritan's heart, not this religious heart. Amen. Philippians 1.6 says, Paul says that I am sure that this, I'm sorry, let me, let me go back to that. Okay, the question was, okay, we must seriously ask ourselves, are we part of the one or are we part of the nine? If we're part of the one, we'll serve God with all of our hearts because we're so grateful. If we're part of the nine, maybe we should ask God to change our hearts. Amen to that. Okay? The amount of appreciation is demonstrated by our willingness to serve God and others to show and to tell people about our Lord Jesus Christ. The greatest service you can give somebody is to tell them about Jesus and, there's, and how to regain their salvation. I don't want to go to heaven without people that I know. We got one life, one chance, a few more spins, and it's over. Will you make a significance in somebody's life? That's how you can serve the body of Christ and serve Jesus Christ and make him smile and say, well done. Ted, well done, my good and faithful servant. Teen, well done. I know it was hard. Dion, I know it's really hard, but you broke through, and thank you. Number three, trust and endurance. James 1, 2, and 4 says, when, when trouble comes, God says that you will not be, okay, remember this, this world, you will have trouble. This is what God says. You will have sickness. You have disease. You will have lack. You will have problems, but take heart. I have overcome the world. 
In other words, with Christ, you will overcome whatever trouble that you're going through. Emphasize, whatever. Yeah, you should be cheering about that. Why? Because with God, all things are possible. When trouble comes your way, consider it an opportunity with great joy. Why? It's a test of your faith. The stronger your faith, the stronger you will be. For you know when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. Let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, need, needing nothing. Just like Lily and I, God has asked us to do some impossible things. And we have just said, God, if it's you, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't work. We'll do our part. I know you will do yours. Amen? Amen. Some of you are going through some tumultuous times right now and you're doubting God or you have veered yourself to do lesser things because you don't fully trust God. But once you reach a point where you are convinced, let me repeat, when you are convinced that nothing in the world can separate you from the love of God, you got it. Then you will say, God, ooh, God, choose me, choose me, God, ooh. I'll, no, I want to partner with you, man. Whatever. I want to live in harmony with you. Okay? The li living by God's instructions is not easy. This is why Paul says, straining forward to what lies ahead. Straining forward. Your flesh really wants to do something that will give you temporary joy. But you know, the Spirit of God says, hey, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, Glenn. Don't do it. Don't do it, Glenn. Don't do it. Don't do it. And when you listen to your spirit, you go, oh, jeez, I should have listened to you, God. Anybody been there? Yeah, I'll tell you. Woo, pass up, eh? So that's really important, straining forward. There is a battle gets raging constantly inside of you, as, as Ephesians 5 tells you. Philippians 1, 6 says, and I'm sure that who began a good work in you will bring it to completion. Man, I'm excited about that. If God is, is leading you and you're following Christ, okay, the good works that you're doing, in spite of your opposition, will be brought to completion. We're all under reconstruction. Can we say an amen? Oh, man, I tell you what, major stuff. Sometimes we have to deconstruct ourselves to reconstruct ourselves. We got to take a look at the things that don't matter and throw it away and leave the things that do matter so that our life is, becomes less complicated and more powerful, working in synergy with God. With this in mind, we should understand our sinful nature is prone to do evil. And the only way we can discipline that is through the power of the Holy Spirit. We cannot do it alone. It's not by might. It's not by strength. It's by the Spirit, says the Lord in Zechariah 3.8. Amen? So that's really important. This is why we're given. Each and every one of us is given the Holy Spirit so we can become more than conquerors to Christ Jesus. We cannot do it alone. Every mistake that we have is the potential to be better. I was watching Davin surf the other day at tracks. I said, man, that's a, that's a far cry from turtles in Kauai. He would boogie board and we, we used to pray that he didn't drown in there. And watch him making tricks and flips and airs and then, what happened? He was willing to suck more of the Pacific Ocean than most people. He has the cuts to prove it. And I look at, no, I look at Albie, man, I tell you what, he comes over there, he closes his eye, and I'm going to ka-ching, 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 ka-ching. Why? He made more errors than anybody else. 55 years in the business made him not perfect by being perfected. Amen? So, so are you. Wherever you are, you're being perfected. We need instructions, but we need correct instructions. This is the I know part. This is in James. Okay, when trouble comes, right? He says, I know. If you need wisdom, verse 5, ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. He not scold you for asking. Okay, here is the yeah, but part. Here. But when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver for a person who divided loyalty is unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from God. 
Their loyalty is divided between God and the world. This is where I get the difference between the word and the world. They're unstable. And everything you do, a house divided against itself shall fall. It's either God or not God. Okay? Number four, me and we. Luke 10, 41 and 42. But the Lord said to her, my dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. There's only one thing, only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it. And it will not be taken from her. Remember that Martha and Mary stuff, yeah? Jesus came to their house. Martha was just so busy. Jesus is coming, okay? Things to do, places to go, you know what I mean? Prepare, prepare, prepare. So when Jesus comes, she, she is really mad at, at God, at Jesus, and at Mary because Mary went to sit at, at Jesus' uh, feet just to learn. And Martha goes, hey, Jesus, are you not concerned? Why don't you tell Mary to come and help me? Whoa. How many of you have scolded Jesus? Doesn't work. Yeah. So we need to do things for Christ, with Christ. Synergy. Christ desires a heart before hands. Can hear in men. Because the old saying goes, people will not care how much you know until they know how much you care. Absolutely true. If people know that you care about them, love them, and you're devoted to them, you know what? They won't be offended at you. Or they'll be less offended at you. Why? Because they know they have, you have their best interests in heart. We're interconnected with one another. We are many different parts, but the same body. 1 Corinthians 12, 12, the human body has many parts, but many parts have this, uh, are made up with the whole body. Synergy. So is it with the body of Christ. We are the body. Christ is at the very heart. He is the lifeblood of everything that we do. Make sense? Five is he and me. And it says, you see how it is. My new life tells me what to do, right? But my old nature that is still inside me loves to do sin. Oh, what a terrible predicament I'm in. Who will free me from my slavery to this deadly lower nature Thank God. It's been done. It's not God is doing. It is done. When God said it is finished, it is finished. By Christ Jesus the Lord, he has set me free. Living in contradiction is like a crimps in, in, in your water hose. Okay? The other day I was trying to water my plants in the front, right? A full blast. <laughs> she only trickles. And says, what is wrong with this? Crimp. There were several crimson in my water hose. So as soon as I went, all the water came out. So it's like in our lives, if God has the blessings of heaven, due to the sacrifice of Lord Jesus Christ, he has opened the windows of heaven so that we will not be able to contain the blessings he has for us. We can live in the overflow of his blessings if we don't have any crimps in our lives. What are the crimson of lives? Many things. Sinful things. Unforgiveness. Disobedience. You name it. Things that are not of God. Or things that we have put ahead of God. Really puts a crimp in your hose. You have a little bit of trickle here. And a lot of us have settled for the trickle. Not for the full blessings of God. This is why God says, you cannot have two masters. It's either or. God says, you know what? Test me. Give me the tithes and offerings that's mine. When you give it to me, I'll open up the windows of heaven. I'll give you back the tithe. And you will live in the overflow of my blessings. So your storehouses, your bank accounts, your lives will not be able to contain the blessings that have you. Read Malachi 3. It is crazy. This is why when we give with all of our hearts cheerfully, and you know what? We don't expect anything, but God says, I will not be indebted to you. I'll give you more. Isn't it cool when you look at that? The more you give, the more you get. It's called giver's gain. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. My suggestion, if you want to live in the overflow of God's blessings, two words, obey God. Simple. You obey him, blessings come. If you quench his spirit, blessings stop. What is quenching the spirit? Not obeying God. 
As simple as that. Amen? And number six, presence and promise. John 15, 7 says, If you remain in me and my words remain in you. Let me repeat that. If you remain in me in my presence and my words remain in you, you may ask anything you want. Okay, let me put a quote, little parenthesis. According to his will, it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings glory to my Father. When you are doing what God tells you to do and you are producing, okay, the things that God wants for you, okay, to God be all of the glory. God says, okay, let your light so shine that by your good deeds, it glorifies you. Right or wrong? Wrong. It glorifies our Heavenly Father. Okay? I'm so happy when people sing. I just had a, just had a Facebook and says, you know what? Um, it really um, congratulated my, my, my daughter, Rayma, for a gift of photography. She takes pictures and on her own, and, and you know, she, she just got gifts, and, she, and her, her photographs are in hospitality books all around Waikiki, and she's going to be hired to do some work. Isn't that cool? 17-year-old kid. It's not about the age. It's about the heart. God can use anybody if you're willing to be his disciples. So my closing ta thought, thought is people who live only by the past tend to be resentful and bitter. People who live only in the present tend to be discontent and anxious. But people who compete for the future will be the most joyful and the most optimistic and the most hopeful people at all, of all. The reason is, have you noticed that your front windshield is larger than your rear view mirror? You cannot go forward trying to look at a rear view mirror. Amen? So you look forward where God wants you, okay? Straining forward, pressing forward, aiming heavenward because, oh, 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 heaven is in my heart. And that's your destination. What kind of person do you think you are? Two type is people. People, some people cause happiness wherever they go. Some causes happiness whenever they go. I pray that you'll be the first kind. Amen? So you can live in contradictions or by convictions. Last scripture that will bless you. One of my numero uno favorite. This is from the Living Bible. Romans 8, 38. For I am convinced that nothing can sep ever separate me from his love. Death can't and life can't. The angels won't and all powers of hell itself cannot keep God, God's love away. Our fears for today, our worries about tomorrow or, or where we are, high above the sky or in the dip, deepest ocean, nothing will, be, nothing will ever be able to separate us from God, the love of God, demonstrated by our Lord Jesus Christ, when he died for us. Can I hear an amen? amen? So we'll break up in small groups, and I just want people to really listen.